Okay, for full transparency, like most of you watching, I am not a lawyer. But you don't exactly need to be Atticus Finch to recognize that the arguments by Trump's legal team don't exactly hold up. I mean, there appear to be three they are pretty focused on, repeating over and over. And each of them feels worthy of some scrutiny. Stick with me here. We're going to go through these one by one. Let's start with the First Amendment defense. It has become a favorite for Trump, his lawyers, and all of his allies in Congress. This is an attack on free speech. They're trying to criminalize exercising of the First Amendment. You're entitled to question whether it was honest or not. That's the uniqueness of the First Amendment. That's the uniqueness of America. But you know what? You shouldn't be prosecuted for your thoughts. This is a free speech killing indictment. Killing free speech, that's what it is. The argument, as you just heard, goes something like this. Under the First Amendment, Trump has a right to openly spout his election conspiracy theories. And on one level, they're right. I mean, he's well within his rights to say that he won the election, even though he didn't. The special counsel team actually went out of their way to point that out in the indictment. They also pointed out that Trump had legal avenues to file lawsuits and call for audits and recounts, all of which he did, none of which succeeded, dozens of them. But here's the problem. According to the indictment, Trump and others worked together with the goal of pressuring officials to overturn a free and fair election. That's not actually free speech. That's a conspiracy. So think of this hypothetical, which actually helped me a lot. If John were to say to his accountant, I pay too much in taxes and I wish I didn't have to, even if that's not true, he can say that. That's free speech. But if John were to say to his accountant, I pay too much in taxes and wish I didn't have to, so don't send in what I owe, that's speech, but it's also a crime. Then there's the second piece of Trump's defense. Blame the lawyers, all the lawyers, and he had many of them. As former FBI general counsel and our next guest, Andrew Weissman, put it, the argument is basically, quote, what was he to do? A lawyer told him he could overthrow the government, so he can't be guilty of trying to overthrow the government. That sounds absurd, right? The other problem here is that he was surrounded by lots of lawyers advising him not to pursue these legal avenues. His top law enforcement official, the acting attorney general, told him the Justice Department could not and would not change the outcome of the election. His deputy White House counsel told him, quote, there is no world, there is no option in which you do not leave the White House on January 20th. According to the indictment, Trump purposefully left his White House counsel out of a meeting where he pressured Vice President Mike Pence to reject the Biden electors. You heard how that struck Ron Klain, because the White House counsel had pushed back on Trump's false claims of election fraud. Donald Trump wasn't led astray by his lawyers. He ignored them and instead went lawyer shopping. He went out of his way to find and empower people willing to make the argument that he wanted to make, even when others plainly pointed out how outrageous his plans were. Finally, and perhaps, perhaps the most absurd argument, Trump was simply ignorant. He just didn't know any better that no matter how delusional, he truly believed that there were rampant fraud, there was rampant fraud in the 2020 election and that he actually won. But there are more than a couple cracks in the foundation of that one. Just this, just this week, one of Trump, Donald Trump's lawyers very plainly said that everyone around him knew he lost. There's testimony and there's a number of aides that have said that the president was made aware that he lost the election and yet continued to uh, argue that it, that it was stolen from him. How, how do you reconcile those two things? Well, I think that everybody was made aware that he lost the election, but that doesn't mean that that was the only advice he was given. Hard to square everybody knowing Trump lost and he just not knowing. There are also several documented instances where he admitted he lost. During a national security briefing after the election, he told advisors, we're going to give that to the next guy. Alyssa Farah testified to the January 6th committee that while watching Joe Biden on TV, Trump once blurted, quote, can you believe I lost to this guy? So just to recap, Trump really can't claim free speech here, can't really blame bad lawyers, all of whom are co-conspirators anyway, and he can't really claim ignorance because that's not exactly believable. So with such a weak legal defense, watch what Trump and his allies will do now. It's a predictable and unfortunately familiar playbook delay, confuse, make a lot of noise. Trump's lawyer is apparently busier running a media blitz rather than handling his client. I mean, just this morning, he threw some of those same defenses at five Sunday morning shows. Trump's defenders are already attacking the judge and lining up to say that it's somehow impossible for the legal system to work correctly in Washington, D.C. They'll use this confusion and noise to delay the trial as long as they can. 
because the longer it goes on, the closer he comes to trying to get back into office. Because the real goal for him is to get elected and shut this case down.